Summer is quickly slipping away. We've got less than two weeks for the official end of summer. And that doesn't leave me a whole lot of time to find a few more photographs. What I'm looking for in this last remaining time is transition photos. Something that gives a hint that summer is coming to an end and another season is trying to take over. Um, that could be leaves changing, leaves on the ground, maybe a change in the weather. I'm really hoping that we uh, get a, a, at least one rain before the end of uh, summer. It's been a very hot, dry summer this year. It hasn't rained a, a single day in, on this project. And I'd love to see a little bit of water. <laughs> that that would be really nice, but you know, you only get what you can get. The weather's going to do what it wants to do. So if we don't get the the rain, well, that's just how it is. You may notice I'm in different footwear. <laughs> My days in of walk up and down the creek and sandals are done for a while. I uh, commented earlier in the comment section of one of my uh, videos that I have got a stress fracture from my foot slipping into some rocks and it's been pretty painful and it hasn't been healing. <laughs> if I step wrong it, it makes my eyes water pretty good. It really burns. So I'm going to be wearing the boots for from here on out for the next couple weeks anyway, just to give me a little extra protection, a little more support. It's not to the point where I can't function. It's just pretty painful if I step wrong. And I feel that if I walk a lot, it, at the end of the day, it really hurts. And in the morning when I get up, it's quite painful. So from here out, you probably won't see me doing a lot of creek walking and uh, a whole lot of jumping from rock to rock kind of thing. <laughs> I'm going to be pretty deliberate on what I step on and where I step. Well, I'm going to try to be. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about what's next. The printing of the zine. Who, who I have printed and a little bit about the software I use to lay out the zine. Now I've only used one company to do all my printing for the zines I've done. This will be my sixth zine. And that company is Blurb. I'm sure you've probably heard of them. Probably one of the bigger printing, on-demand printing companies out there. And the reason I stay with them is I think the uh, product I'm getting is pretty consistent. The printing is at a high enough level that I'm, I'm happy with it. The cost per unit isn't too bad for you get, I think. Plus they also handle the distribution so I can put together a zine and someone can order them from my blurb store 
and they handle the, the shipping and the printing and all that which is really valuable to me so that's really basically why I stay with blurb I haven't found a reason to shop around for other other uh, printers this is not a paid <laughs> sponsorship by blurb they have no idea who I am this is just a company that I've been using for a while it, and it I'm not endorsing them as far as that goes I don't have a lot of bad stuff to say about them because they've been working pretty good for me it doesn't really matter who you if you've got somebody you really like you should continue to work with them it's just uh, who I ended up using at the beginning and and I found no reason to uh, look for other places to have my scenes printed I'm not gonna go through too many of the specifics if you want to research the cost of a per page and that kind of thing just go to their website and you can find all that they offer they do books and magazine they, they do different grades of paper different sizes I just use the magazine format because that's kind of what this is basically it's just a, a magazine but I think the paper stock is pretty good quality and like I said before I think the printing is is good for what I'm doing let's talk a little bit about the software I'm using to lay this scene out what I use is Bookwrite. It's it's what I downloaded from Blurb site. It's really easy to use. It works well on my Mac. I do believe that they uh, let you use other uh, page layout software. I don't have any, and I'm not going to spend a ton of money on that kind of software. It's not something I would use enough to, to warrant the cost. And I'm finding that this Bookwrite software is very functional for what I'm doing. I'm going to insert a little bit about the software and how to use it, how I'm using it right here. And I'll catch up with you on the other side. So I thought we'd take a look at this Bookwrite page layout software. It's very simple. You can download this from Blurb's website. What I've done is I've started a new project and now I'm to the point where I'm, I want to add some photos to the project. So let's add a few photos. So now that we have some photos loaded up, let's start with the cover. What I want to do is a wraparound cover. So the image that I picked for this uh, zine, and so far it's, it seems to be the, the, the uh, image that I'm probably going to use unless something else happens in the last week. This is going to be the uh, zine cover. And I'm not going to go too much into it, kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. Now it's going to give you a, a little warning sign because we're going outside the borders, but that's okay. We'll be ignoring that. But this will be the cover shot, the cover image, and this will, of course, be the back. Let's go over to the pages. Let's, just, let's drop a photo in here. I'm going to put a vertical shot in here. And you want to try to keep it, or I want to try to keep it, inside the purple areas. If I want to make sure that everything is printed from this image. And it will give you like the center line, if I want to center it, which I probably won't for this one, I might leave a little more room on the bottom. I might want this page to be black instead of white. Right now it's set up to be white. And to do that you take the paint can here and you pick black. And you can uh, have a black background. And I, for black and white images, this does seem to work pretty well. And I, I use it quite often. I haven't decided if this scene's going to be white or black or a mixture of both. I'll kind of have to play with it. One thing that I do, though, for either, either if it's white or black, is I put a border on the image. Right now it says there's no border. So I'm going to pick the border style. And then the color, if it's a black background I'm going to want a white border at least that's what I want and uh, I think that looks pretty good I just think it looks more polished if you've got the border pages two and three 
that could be two separate photos. It could be a number of photos. It could be a, a lead shot, like, like a dominant photo with a couple detail shots. There's a lot of ways to approach that. And until I start actually sitting down and um, laying out the pages, I'm not going to know for sure how I'm going to be laying this out. This is a good example of a photo that wouldn't work as a full page completely crossed because the main feature is right in the middle and you don't want your anything important to be too close to the center of this. So when I use this image, it's going to have to be more of a three quarter page setup or it becomes something smaller. Maybe I'll use it something like this and then put a, a maybe a detail shot down here, a couple detail shots. Or I, I slide it down and it becomes a, a lead shot and I still think that's too close to the center. Maybe we do something like this. I've got a few vertical shots that I can use. I'm doing this on my laptop so it's a little, a little clunky right now because I don't have a mouse plugged in. But I could put maybe a, a vertical shot next to it. It's kind of like a, a detail. And we can also turn this page black. We can put a border on on the uh, image. Change the color. We can do the same for this photo. Give it a border. Change the color. It's all pretty simple. And you just kind of have to play with it. This zine can be expand it easily. Right now it's set up for 20 pages, but you can add easily add more pages. You just get charged so much per page when you go over the uh, allotted 20 pages. They give you 20 to start at a set price and then you can add more if you need to. And this will allow you to upload the the project when you're done just by hitting the upload button. It's everything's very inter well integrated. I think that's another reason I stay with Blurb. This is just a quick look at Blurb's BookWrite page layout software. Just to give you an idea how simple it is to use, how easy it is to create your own book or zine or magazine. So let's rejoin me out making photos. A good example of using what I got. They might look pretty cool wet, but that dustiness kind of tells more of a story, more of a summer story, and it says a little bit more about where these roots are located. I, I have no idea if this is going to actually be an interesting photograph. It's definitely not going to be a beautiful photograph. I, would, I, would, I don't think most people's idea of beauty is a bunch of roots sticking up out of a trail. But it still might be interesting, and that's, that's a good enough reason to make the photograph. I know I said I was going to stay out of the creek, but I came across this uh, section of creek that I haven't photographed and there's some logs across it. Kind of add some depth, maybe add a little interest. So I'm going to try to walk down here and, and, uh, and see if there's an image to be made. It's just a little wet feet. These boots are waterproof. Or just supposed to be anyway. I spent a lot of money on these boots, so we'll test that waterproof. We'll see how waterproof they are.
But I really like the way these leaves kind of mirror each other. One leaf is upside down, one leaf facing up. I like how they are light, lighter colored than the background, so they should really pop. This is actually a, one of those transition photos that I was looking for. Something that hints to a coming season. Some of these leaves are coming off the trees now. I don't know if that's just because it's been so hot and dry or if it's because autumn is getting close. I think I'm going to end today's video right here in this wonderful setting that I've actually never been in before. Hopefully I've got some useful shots. I think I've made a few compositions that I think have potential. Fingers crossed I'll have enough interesting photos for this zine. You'll see me out here at least one more time. We'll come out here to wrap this uh, project up. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. We're starting to see a little bit of transition. It's starting to look like summer is starting to come to an end. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.